How do folks, Stray Cat 74 here. I know it's been a long time, but um, stuff happened, and I just kind of been busy and not quite so busy, and trying to find something to do, and job searching. Yeah, I I, I lost my job. Long story. Not going to go into it here. The reason I'm speaking to you from the basement of solitude yet again is a five things that every bug out bag should have and everybody should have a bug out bag um, if for no other reason then you never know what's going to happen if your bug out bag is prepped cool beans you need something look in the bag so what should the bug out bag have? Everything depends on your situation, but I made a list and I can't see what I'm doing right now because I actually have text on the screen. So I'm going to read some of what I have, which is a lot different than I normally do, which is just ramble on and hope you find it entertaining. Uh, five things every bug out bag should have. The short list is water, fire, shelter, some kind of food to tide you over, and tools. Tools will always depend on your situation. So let's start with the number one thing, water. Um, as the Camelback folks say, and this is in my list of mottos, hydrate or die. You only get about 72 hours without water. And, you know, you will die without it, and it'll hurt the entire time you're dying. Um, I always have a couple of different ways to make or, to make or get water. Um, some kind of flavored water. Um, I also keep the empty containers to refill them. Um, I get those little Mio things. I get the little... Uh, sport packets of uh, the Propel, um, that helps. But you'd always should have a gross water supply of some kind. Um, the survival straws, always a handy thing to have. Uh, my LBE, my load bearing equipment, uh, Alice 1, Alice 2, depending on what generation you're following. I think they're they're past uh, Molly gear now into something completely new. I have no idea. I don't keep that much track of it, but I've got a, uh, it's not a vest, it's a uh, Y harness. In my butt pack, I have a survival straw. I carried one in my truck. Um, I also have a sweet water water filter. This is good for up to 200 gallons, depending on the cleanliness of your water supply. And I'd pull it out, but it's long and bald. And it's a hand pumped water filter. Uh, for sterilization, I bought a SteriPen. I also have several of the little bottles of the uh, water purification tablets. They're actually two different brands. One's with one canteen, one's with the other. Uh, the one is the Coleman or Koonigans or whatever the hell it is that you can get at Walmart. I've got a couple of bottles of that laying around. One's in one of my uh, one-quart canteens. I forget what the other one is. Great, now that's going to bug me. I don't remember. Anyway... This is very handy because you take a glass of water. Uh, this is you need batteries for this. It emits an, a super bright, ultra intense ultraviolet light, and it only comes on when it's submerged. When the the tip, is, I'm gonna let me pull it out real quick. That way you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, see these two little pins here? When water comes in contact with that, um, a it's not a current, it's more like a uh, ohm's resistor test. Well, 
when it gets conductivity across that with the switch on, it'll light up and run for, I think it's like 30 seconds. Very handy thing to have around. Uh, UV light kills a lot. Then you use the uh, purification tablets. I would use it in addition to, just because, well, you know, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they ain't really out to get you. Kind of. Extra preparation. So, hydrate or die. If you don't have water, um, if you don't have water filters, there's lots of easy ways to make them on the internet. Uh, in my text that I'm going to include below, um, I have a bunch of links from Google to other YouTube channels to a bunch of other stuff. Check out the links in the description. Uh, after water, you need fire. <laughs> fire. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've made several videos involving fire, making fire, prepping for fire. Matter of fact, I have a 50 caliber ammo can dedicated to fire. We've gone through this before. Check out that video. I'll put a link up here. I don't know where here is. Like I said, I can't see my screen right now. I've got text on it. I'll put a link so that you can go watch that video. After fire, well, touch back on fire for a second. Um, boil water for a minimum of five minutes. A minimum. More is good, but more ain't going to help terribly. Anything less than five minutes, uh, the water can still be contaminated. Filter it. Boil it. Do your water purification, either SteriPen or the tablets. Um, a couple of drops of bleach, but that's if you're doing it by the gallon, of, and it's not really recommended you do that. Um, there's lots of different ways to decontaminate water. So, you need fire to boil your water. Go figure. You need the water to put out the fire when you're done. So, be safe. Only you can prevent forest fires. Um, after, fi after water, after fire, we have shelter. Lots of different ways to make, to get shelter. Um, I've got these Mylar blankets. Uh, emergency blankets. Uh, these things were all the rage a couple of years ago, and they went from 50 cents for one of these to $5 for one of these, which is just well, freaking little ridiculous this can save your life have several around have one in each car a couple around your house definitely one in your bug out bag you never know when something like this can save your life um, i also have a bunch of these rain ponchos um, it's got a hood it's got sleeves and if you're careful with it you can turn this into a rudimentary shelter if nothing else it'll keep the sun off it'll keep the rain off um, now this is obviously green. They make other colors. Um, I've seen blue. I've seen yellow. I've got a, a red one out in my car because, well, if somebody's going to be looking for me. I want them to be able to find me when I'm in my car, at least. Uh, debris shelters. Lots of good information on the net for that. Um, I would show you my uh, U.S. Army survival manual, which I've had since I was a kid, and I've read through it a dozen times, but it's it's back there on a shelf somewhere, and I'm not entirely positive where, because my books got shoved on a shelf, and I haven't organized them yet. It's on the list of stuff for me to ignore. Don't worry about it. Uh, after shelter, food. Lots of different ways to have food, and of course, they're not where I put them. Hang on just one moment. And I apologize for the shorts. Well, here's one of them. I knew I was forgetting something. 
emergency ration bars. See, uh, these are not C rations, as in the letter C. These are Coast Guard approved food ration bars. This is 2,000 calories or 2,400 calories. Um, if you're not doing anything sitting in a boat in the shade, this will last you two days. Because honestly, you don't need that much if all you're doing is sitting and sleeping. You know, if you're out chopping wood, exploring, running for your life, this will be about a day's ration. Um, MREs and... Let me go over to the camera here. If you look right here... That's a box of MREs. Yes, I switched over to the camera so I can see myself now. This is a food ration bucket. Uh, that's 330 servings. Small servings. But servings in the last figure, that's 150 meals for normal humans. Across the top shelf there, that makes it a lot difficult. There we go. That's all Mountain House frozen stuff, or freeze-dried stuff, I should say. Then the next shelf down, uh, that's a Pelican case filled with the single-serving-sized Mountain House uh, bags. Some of them are vacuum sealed. The rest of them are just the regular standard Mylar bags. Then there's a couple of the food buckets back here. Um, the next shelf down is alcohol. <laughs> not that I actually, you know, the bottle of scotch that's there, which is the, not that one. That's Glenlivet. That's vodka. That's uh, knock and dough scotch. I've actually had that for a couple of few years now, and it's still got a good two inches or so in there. I actually don't drink much. I'm always joking about needing a bottle of scotch, but I got one, and I still haven't finished it. Then there's cooking equipment, various other things, and then down on the bottom shelf is... Now, this is my bedroom, remember, and this is what I got in my bedroom. <laughs> More food buckets and such. So, let me go back over to my text thing here. So that's food. Next is going, uh, the, to, the number five on my list is tools. Tools can be, be anything from a folding lock blade, and I usually carry at least one. Uh, this is a $5 knife that I picked up at Walmart. I flew out to Connecticut, and when you fly, you're not allowed to carry guns, ammo, fire, ign you know, igniting equipment, multiple knives. So I left my knives at the house. And when I got there, every time I turned around, I needed a damn knife. So I bought a $5 El Cheapo. But while I was also there, my father gave me one of these. This is a fisherman's knife. It has a wickedly sharp blade. I don't know if you're going to be able to read the inscription there. And it's going to... It, the, the, the camera's waking out on me. Okay. It says, Fisherman's Pride Stainless Steel. And on the edge of the blade here, somebody scrub, uh, etched their name. The other thing that's in this knife... Actually, there's two things... It's what happens when you bite your fingernails. See, so you have a bottle opener, always important when you're fishing, fish scaler, and the little thing to help you get the hook out of the fish's mouth. So, multiple tools on one. Then you have a wickedly sharp pointed blade. This does not lock open, by the way. And there's one other tool on here. If you look here, I'm going to try and get it to focus. Ah, here we go. 
that's a sharpening stone for sharpening your fish hooks. Very handy to have. Uh, I don't know how old the, this knife is, but I know that they've been around for well over 50 years. Other tool, hatchet, um, somewhere over here behind the camera, behind everything else behind the camera. Is my axe, yes, I have an axe in my bedroom. I use it for killing spiders. Other tools you might need may be something as simple as a titanium spork. Yeah, it's actually titanium. This thing weighs almost nothing. It's a couple of grams. And if this is all you have to eat with, I mean, it's fairly strong. You could probably cut a steak with that through friction. I mean, not like... It's sharp, but stabby, spoony, sparky. Tools are what you need. When you need it, where you need it. Uh, what you carry from lighters to knives, and that one went way the hell too far, to something as rude and crude as... A chopper that I'm making for a friend of mine. This is eighth in, or excuse me, quarter inch thick, 1095 steel. I need to get around to finish this one of these days. There's no edge on it. This is just the initial bevel. I need to come in, do the heat treat, hit it with a secondary bevel, and then get a handle on it. I'm actually going to do something different with this. And I know this is getting off the topic of my tools. Well, kind of, sort of. I have... They don't know where it went to now. Some fire hose micarta that I'm going to make into a handle. So, the right tool for the right job. So, I carry multiple kinds of knives. My LBE has a K-bar. I'd get it, but it's under my bed over, over here. I have a couple of hatchets, a tomahawk, my axe for killing spiders, knives all over the place, various kinds of survival ration, fire, fuel, food, and water. So, one of the things that always upsets me when they do those, you know, you get one item to go out and survive, that you can't survive with just one item. There's a reason those shows are only 21 days. Because if you go any longer than that without food, you start to physically deteriorate rapidly, and it's unhealthy. So... They get water, and then they sit around a lot. If you've got those five things, and it doesn't matter what those five things are, as far as your particular mix, if they work for you, they work. I'm not going to tell you you're doing it wrong. I might say I would do it differently, because, well, hell, I'm different. Go figure. You know, fat guy with long hair living in his own basement because I, I prefer the dark. You'll notice there's no windows in my room. This is done deliberately, because I like to sleep in the dark. When I turn these lights off, it's completely black in here, and that's almost the only way I can sleep nowadays, well, with and with the fan running. So, way too much information. This is 20 minutes of me babbling about crap. 
and not actually going out and do anything. I actually do have a couple of things planned since I'm unemployed and have plenty of time on my hands. Um, I'm planning a 22-day. We're probably going to do that, if not Friday, or at least film it on Friday. We might be doing it Saturday, depending on what the weather's, weather's like. If it's over 80, I don't go outside, not even to my forge tent, which is stupid because it gets really freaking hot in there. And if it's really hot outside, it's not quite as hot. Go figure. But, anyway. I have been doing some forging. Nothing I'd want to show you guys because I suck. I also bite like a nipple, but that's completely a separate subject. Okay, I just hit the 20-minute mark. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Um, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. So... Water, shelter, fire, food of some kind, at least enough to get you out of a bad spot. Um, I've got a box of MREs over there. No. A bug out bag should have at least 72 hours, three days. So, three MREs, a pack of this enough water to last you, or at least in a way to get enough water to last you. Um, I have a camelback with two two-liter bladders in it. Actually, I don't think it's a camelback brand, but same idea. A hydration pack. Hey, there we go. Whatever you get that works for you is good enough. Yeah, I'm wearing the glasses because I was intending to read the list. And as usual, it just kind of babbled. In any case, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Hit the bell. Um, it doesn't actually help me any except, you know, to let you guys know when I actually publish a damn video. Um, and I know there's the whole YouTube monetization thing has been an issue. I can tell you completely honestly, I haven't gotten a dang, goddamn dime out of YouTube. I haven't gotten any donation, so pretty much if you see me doing it, it's all on my dime. And I'm unemployed right now, so I'm freaking broke. So if you guys want to throw me a couple of bucks, tell me what to do with it, even if it's folding it up so it's really sharp corners and shoving it. Okay, I'm probably not going to do that. I'll probably just stick it in the bank, but... If you want to throw a couple of bucks my way for ammo, for emergency gear, or what have you, please do. Um, PayPal will be in the, the description as well. Thank you. Um, have a good evening, and once again, from the basement of solitude.